All right, before we kick things off, we want to talk about uh, Miller Lite, of course. The big draft is coming up. What are we going to do with our picks? Who knows? It's anyone's guess, but there's one selection that every football fan can share. That's a nice ice-cold Miller Lite. Uh, it's a no-brainer. Really, this is also one of those weekends where you just want to be stocked up. Yeah. Like, this is the perfect time. This podcast, at least the audio version, is dropping in the morning. Make sure you got your Miller ready to go this Just weekend. have the buckets on 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 repeat so you don't have to ask anybody just say hey keep bringing buckets every game every half you're just going through buckets everybody enjoys Miller Lite and with the draft Caleb's here Miller Lite is the Caleb Williams of of, uh, of beer so I'm excited to have that uh, you just sprint to the podium and take your Miller Lite no questions asked we're ready to go yep and you're not going to, want to leave your house so listen up here really quick uh, till kickoff comes around, enjoy the beer that tastes like the season. Miller Lite, great taste, 96 calories. To get Miller Lite delivered right to your door, visit MillerLite.com slash Mitchell, or you can pick up some Miller Lite pretty much anywhere that they sell beer. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. All right, bang, bang. Welcome to the Mid Show. Uh, big show today. We will be joined later by uh, Chicago Cubs ace Justin Steele. That'll be the last interview we have coming for you uh, from our Arizona spring training trip. We will also be joined at the end of the show by uh, a couple of local Barstool guys, Liam Blutman and Ohio's Tate, to talk college basketball. We'll get into the bracket. Um, but we will, of course, start with the big news that broke as all of us were out for St. Patrick's Day. Mm-hmm. Justin Fields is no longer a member of the Chicago Bears. They traded him for a sixth rounder to Pittsburgh. And uh I yeah. think it's gonna be a fourth. You think he's gonna fifty one percent? Yeah, so he has to play fifty one percent of the snaps. That's the condition of that trade. That's means makes it go up to a fourth. I think that I think it's in the Steelers' best interest for Fields to be the guy too. So if you're looking they're trying to solve a long term quarterback problem. Russell Wilson is, you know, kind of at the end of his rope here, it feels like. So I do think I think that's the right team for him to go to. So reportedly, he turned down, uh, and they they presented him with four teams. He's like, ah, I don't want to go there. Uh, so he always wanted Pittsburgh. He got what he wanted. Bears did right by him, as Paul said he would do. So I, I, I'm I'm happy for him. I'm glad he's in the other other conference too. So you don't have to really yeah. see him or worry about him. Um, if it's a true competition, though, I do think Russ will win. I think he'll camp. win out of camp, and I yeah. think as it goes along. I think we'll see. Russ has done the whole transition. He's been in the league for 10 plus years. Yep. He played on a different yeah. team. No, that's a good point. Playbook. Yep. And from what I understand, he's a fucking big time, like studier, like breaking it down. Like I remember, uh, I think it was Olsen told us that. Like yeah. once he went to Seattle, he was like so impressed with Russell. Like he had everything like laid out. He got it. He brought like the whiteboard. Yeah. Like he's just kind of a freak in that manner. And he's got a lot to prove, man. He like, does. A lot of people are. Uh, right. A lot of people are shutting him down. I mean, he's a guy who said he wants to play until he's like fucking forty something. So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I'm I'm not going to buy Russell Wilson stock, but I will uh, be interested to see how he responds after the Denver mm-hmm. uh, fiasco. Fiasco, yeah. yeah, I guess it was definitely that's it it a bad trade. Yeah, yeah, it's unequivocally. Bad. Yeah, uh, Danny, where were you when the news broke? I was drunk at a bar, St. Patrick's Day. For those who forgot. Uh, I got a call from White Boy Rick, who also helps with the social, just basically pulling the fire alarm. But we got that graphic up in no time. What, are, <laughs> what, are, what about you guys? I got so lucky just being. I I, I went home. We already did uh, the boat that I didn't make, and uh, did the whole downtown thing. I came home for a little bit, and I had just woken up from that mid St. Patrick's Day nap, and I see it, and I like feel like I was one of the first people. Like I didn't. I saw it in real time. The right report tweet. I was like, oh fuck. So like. And I know people care more about the guts of the trade. We'll get into everything. But like just from our lives, one of the scariest things that can happen is breaking news while Big, you're not yeah. on the scene. Yeah. I was like doing the sign of the cross all day, thankful <laughs> that I was during it happened during yeah. my nap and not somewhere else that we were able to get on top. Yeah, well your 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 quarterback getting traded while you are basically stuck at sea, no Wi Fi is a Barcelona <laughs> oh, yeah. nightmare. Yes. Do you think this is this is stupid, but do you think that they Maybe we're like, let's just get this done while everybody's out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Lance, you're convinced? I totally buy that. Yeah. yeah. I think that totally makes sense. Like, hey, you know, let's. It won't be as big of a deal if everyone's in good spirits and like drunk. And then I, I saw it. I'm assuming most of you guys saw. I was out, and I was just like, "Fuck, we got rid of him. Damn, there because, it is." And just moved on. Yeah. I, and I d- maybe it's just my own feed, but it didn't feel like the Justin Field stands were out 
with like their pitchforks and torches when the trade happened. All right. St. Like, Patrick's Day was still going to be trending over Justin. Yeah. Fields. Yeah. So, uh, and a good move. And now we can just, you know, wish him well and we're moving forward. Yeah. So obviously the big uh, point of contention here is the return six rounder. Not uh, great. Not what everyone had initially anticipated. I weirdly had almost like no reaction to getting a six rounder. More so it was just a reaction of relief. Yeah. Like, of course, I'm not happy that we got a six rounder, but like, I don't know. It was like weird. It was like the, you know, when you, you get McDonald's breakfast and you go for like two sandwiches instead of one, you're like not happy about it, but you just don't think about it. You it, know, you're just like, yeah, yeah, like whatever, like time to move on time it, to move. You know, it's a, it's a shame that our guy White Sox Dave isn't here. Cause I feel like I would be more upset about like the return for a, a Dylan Cease than I would be for Justin Fields, you know, where it's like, ah, oh, you're, you're underwhelmed by both of them. But like. You're just clearing the clearing the path for Caleb. Like that's all this really was. That's all they needed to do, uh, and it's like mission accomplished. And and it's unfor yeah. Like it would have been great to get a second or a first, the way Schefter had said, like in the beginning of this process, but w- didn't materialize. And I, I'm just ready to, you know, close the book on that on that whole era and yeah. just move forward. A wild time. A wild. Uh, what really? December, January, February. A wild three yeah. months for Bears fans. Well, it was a civil war. Yeah. Yeah. Really like really a while, January, February, to be honest. Yeah. Like, but that's kind of when most stuff uh unraveled. But yeah, I don't know. It's sad. Like my, my initial reaction was as far as like losing Justin, because it's all it's all layered, right? Like yep. the return, how you feel about fields, how you feel about the future. That was my feeling about the return. Like, of course you want high value, but like I'm just happy it's over. Yep. The thing about Fields, I'm, it's it was sad to me because like that's the most I was like in on a quarterback. In on a quarterback, yeah. like, by you far. in on him more than you were in on Cutler. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Like, listen, don't get me wrong. Jay got a raw deal in a lot of ways in Chicago, but uh, he he's not like you know he bears some blame for sure. Totally, like, yeah, like for sure. And I think that's kind of gotten forgotten throughout the years. Um, but I and he was like already like in his mid season like he wasn't our he what we didn't have the you know there was a beacon of more of I don't want to say hope but uh, just us drafting him and like him being our guy and like knowing like yeah. he was our shiny toy was kind of factored into I mean the shot of us on draft day when they traded yeah. up when we're in the old office and we're all you know jumping on the couch excited you know and because he was. It's like I loved him. It was like that guy was tough as nails in that game against Clemson in the playoff. Like I'll yeah. never forget that. It just fe- felt like he had, you know, the right stuff. And it just he came into a weird situation where you know the they ushered out the previous quarterback, uh, Trubisky, and then but it's like you have the weird coaching staff, like that whole thing, the holdover. It, it was just it was just never quite right. Then they then Poles comes in and tears everything down except for him. And it was like, okay, go do your best. And that was just him running for a thousand plus yards. And it was like, it got you to buy in. And then this year, they're just, it felt like a step backwards. And it's like, when you have the number one pick, you know, it's, it, it becomes an easy decision. I really wonder if, if Carolina had been a little bit better than the Bears were, say, picking fourth. I wonder if we go for a May or Daniels or if this, or if like, you keep Fields and, you and know, go through it. Yeah. Oh. So you wonder how they evaluate him internally if they're moving on no matter what or if it was like hey we just can't it's it's Caleb like Caleb is forcing our hand yeah and Danny analogies will be back it really was like the the girl you wanted to marry she just like had to move away or something yeah that's what Justin feels was. Yeah. you want to work you're happy to see him happy for sure like by all accounts a good guy like I have no resentment yep. towards Justin Fields um this is not Mitch. He was better than Mitch Trubisky, definitely for sure. Yep. Um, so that's two completely different scenarios. As much as people want to, you know, compare stats or compare win loss records, whatever. Yep. Um, and it's uh, yeah, it's just unfortunate. I also I don't really love people saying he didn't get an opportunity. I thought I think he did get an opportunity to an extent. Things weren't perfect. Things are perfect nowhere though. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it just didn't. It, it just he he just uh, we have an opportunity to get a better quarterback, yeah. and that's what we're gonna do. And it also just and this is like a my own dumb eyes, but it just felt like there wasn't, you know, you watch the first game of the year against the Packers, and and then the Tampa game, and then the last game of the year, 
And it was just like, you know, there's still just not any growth. It's mm-hmm. like, it's still the same mistakes. It's still the same, you know, kind of slower dropbacks, it's the slower reads, this, you know, and it's just like, you, you didn't show enough improvement and growth in some of those problem areas to give us confidence going forward that he could take that next step and be the guy. So, yeah. Did you see a big cat's clip from part of my take where he was, he was hard on saying like the bears didn't give him a fair shake. How would you retort that? I, I just think, listen, he had, he had two years under a solid, a regime that was built around him, so to speak. I don't, I think he had one year of that. His first year with, with polls where they finished dead last, I don't, that was a teardown year. He didn't have sure. much. Of it. He went he, into the year. He didn't with have a number one wide receiver. I get that. And the line was bad, but he was still like he had Getzy two years, and that's a like, Getzy yeah. was like we fucking loved Getzy. Yeah, one. no, I know. It's like oh my god, we hopefully he doesn't get a head coaching job. Um, so I don't. I just don't. I just don't really agree with that. I think if you give a guy a chance to start, and then especially this last year, I think he was like a, fair, a season is. Yeah. Chance. As yeah. As I'm concerned. If you want to say the full time, sure. Totally not. He started under the Nagy era. Mm-hmm. They threw him in there. His first game ever, he got sacked fucking eight times. Yeah. Like, all right. If you want to say that there's pieces where he wasn't, sure. But it, I mean, a full season, and you need more. Don't get me wrong. But full season, and it's your third year. Like, you didn't. You, you there didn't, were opportunities. For totally. Sure. And they went out and got DJ Moore. Yeah. And then, like, look, the Claypool thing didn't work, but that wasn't an effort to help Justin Fields. And they signed an offense or drafted an offensive tackle in the top ten. Like they did, they did try to yeah. support him. And I'm sure people are going to be like, "Well, you were. I, I was the last one to be out on fields. Like, you know, how are you not eating crow now, so to speak?" But my thing was, was I, I was always holding on hope that that 2022 yeah. fucking lightning bolt would take over, and it just never did. Yeah. And it, it just it, never did. And then the, the lightning bolt stuff was a regression. Yeah. You know, like we never saw those electric runs where it was just like you felt like he was going to manufacture points by himself. And that, that that element of his game went away too. And at mm-hmm. the end of the day, you know, if you look at Caleb Williams, you'd probably say like worst case scenario, he is what Fields was. You know, where he's not playing on time, it's scrambling, it's extending plays, but never really playing within an offense. That's worst case scenario. So if that's worst case scenario, just restart the clock. And if you have the same guy, then you're on a rookie quarterback and you know, whatever. And uh and I think that's that's the that's the smartest thing to do going forward is just to start that clock over. Yeah. And like everyone is talking about how good Caleb Williams is gonna be. So that's kinda yeah. open and shut. Like you have an opportunity to get someone who yeah. many people think is going to be better. The arm talent's undeniable. Yeah. It's undeniable. It, he had his pro day today that we're recording on Wednesday. Yep. And he just, the way he just slings it, it, it looks so effortless. and In the pocket, outside the pocket, it, it's, he he is, he's fun to watch play football. And, and if he can, you know, in an NFL offense with enough guys around him, uh, which I think he's coming into a, an amazing situation for a number one overall pick. I, I I'm starting to get excited about. The yeah, players. like I'm ready. I'm ready for, for football. Already. Yeah, because I'll miss Justin Fields. You know, I, I I'll I don't think he's a running back. I think he's yeah. I think he'd be a solid quarterback at some point, but he's just not. He didn't make the steps to justify. Correct. You know sticking with him for another year and having to figure out a contract situation over cable and imagine if your polls and you see what stroud did it's like am i really going to do that again? yeah you can't can't can't, can't do it so, so yeah justin's wishing the best i yep. think that's a sentiment i think a lot of people like just don't be weird and like not root for caleb williams in the back that would now be because crazy. you're like such yeah. a diehard feels because the people who are like so, people are so mad and it's like I don't know. Maybe yeah. maybe you will be right in the end. Who knows? Maybe Fields takes that step with Tomlin and they figure it all this, out. This is one of those things where even if Caleb is a bust, I still won't fault Pulls. Like this to me is the logical right move. Agreed. To, to, so it's like, hey, like I did everything I could and this was the right thing to do. Your logic was sound, so it just didn't work out. Sometimes things just don't work out. Agreed. And then the second half here, we didn't talk about Keenan Allen yet. That broke as – the day our episode yep. went live, but I'm fucking thrilled. I was like out somewhere. I immediately ran outside to the video. I was hyped, dude. Yeah. Keenan Allen's the fucking man. He's he's the truth, and he's like 
you talk about like the perfect type of wide receivers for a rookie quarterback, I think it's those two guys. Like they know how to him and DJ Moore. Like DJ Moore is an athlete. He's gonna take DJ Moore, they're they're both like walking first downs, but in different ways. Mm-hmm. Where like Keenan Allen, it's it's third and eight. You're gonna throw it to him and he has nine yards. And he's he, there. He's at the he's, sticks. Yeah, he fucking he's open. knows where he's at. Yep. He's gonna plant his feet. And then DJ Moore, you throw it to him on third and eight, short of the sticks, and he just running backs his way through and pick, you know, and they both pick it up. So yeah. that to me is very exciting. I did have the like they still need some, uh, they still need another wide receiver. So I'm I'm curious to see if they're going to sign somebody, or it feels like they don't have like that jump ball. I mean, I think Rome is still very much on the board. Though. Yeah, and I had kind of, and I was wondering what you what where your head was with the ninth pick now. Because I had kind of written it off, be like, let's go get a defensive guy. No, I think Rome's still there. Yeah. He's on the board. Yeah. Keenan Allen, he's going to turn 32 in April. He's on the back nine for sure. He, hopefully we extend him for a couple more years because I think he's still really good. Yeah. And speed is not his number one trait. Right. Yep. So he could be good for you know a couple more years, I think. But uh, I think you could still very much take Rome, no problem. I, I, I would agree now. In my head, I'm just like, take take an edge, take Byron Murphy, trade back, you know, pick up. Because they've, they've given up, you know, some some middle-round picks here to make these different moves happen, and they didn't get the return for field. So it's like they're a little light on on draft picks after nine. Mm-hmm. So it, it Because I originally was not a huge neighbors guy either because I didn't like having both of our wide receivers being six foot. Yeah. You know, now that you get – Keenan Allen, you get kind of your bigger receiver. Yeah. Boom, he would fit in there, but he's there's no way he drops. But yeah, uh, according well, to everything could, that's going on. who you, knows? You but. don't, you don't know because I think there's going to be someone's going to trade up and take JJ McCarthy. At, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, who knows? So we'll see what happens. But yeah, I, I, I don't hate the idea. I, I want like a jump ball type of target, which would be a Dunze because I don't, I don't really see Keenan Allen as that. As a no, I no, he's yeah, not. But yeah. he, but he would be. You're right. He's yeah. not, and I, I, I wasn't saying that, but right. That's kind of the that's kind of the thing. He that is your possession receiver, in a right? Sense. It's like your your quintessential yeah. move the sticks guy. Yeah, where it's like you know you watch Caleb Williams play, and or even in his pro day, just he just slings those deep balls wow. seventy yards in the air. Like you, you don't really have. We got a guy we drafted to do that. It's a golden opportunity for Tyler Scott. Yeah. And he hold an opportunity, but even for he's him. like a speed, like he's just a speed guy. He is. I want a guy who can like be physical, high point the and ball, do yeah, yeah. Which would be, which would be a Dunze. Like yeah. a Dunze is like him and Penix were like just lit up the Pac-12 all the way to the national championship game, doing shit like that. Yeah. So I don't. It's almost like I don't even really care what they do at nine. Like I feel like they can't. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm. All, I'm like. They want to take a tackle. They want to take a defensive guy. Like yeah. they want to take a. Dun- I'm they kind take of an edge. You know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I would like. I get if they would trade back because they're kind of low on picks, but that would probably be like the biggest bummer of an outcome. But I wouldn't be mad. Yeah. Just to be selfish, like oh, I want like a sick. Yeah. Day one, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we're looking at Caleb, Komet, Everett, Swift. Yeah. Keenan Allen. There's plenty. EJ of Moore. Like that's that, fucking that to exciting. Me, yeah, and that to me is just like, hey, we're gonna go. We're gonna go on a drive that takes up this entire quarter, and it's gonna end up in seven. Yeah, like, you know, because it's not. It's like that. They don't have maybe necessarily like the sling it down forty yards down the field guy, but we'll just we'll kill you six, seven, eight yards at a time. Yeah. that's that's kind of exciting to me too. Yeah, yeah. I'm pumped, dude. Yeah, me like, too. I'm really fucking bullish to be a Bears fan right now. And people want to shit on us. Ardry Theory is a fucking idiot. Yeah. Uh, everyone who wants to talk shit about the Bears, like, I'm really happy with the direction. This team has gone this offseason so far. So, um, and, and the way it played out, where they lost some of those games at the end of end of the year, you end up with a fourth place schedule again. Mm-hmm. So there is there there's some runway. There's some run. There's reason. There's genuine reason for optimism. I'm not going to do the thing where I predict ten wins again. <laughs> I won't do that again. But I but I might do I it can't. in August. <laughs> so like right. the division the division's tough. Um, and you got a rookie quarterback, but it is, it's probably, I think, was it, was it you or was it white boy Rick to put out, was this the most optimistic you've been as a Bears fan? Me. Yeah. And I think that's like, I think that's a pretty good question. I'm trying to think of another time. Yeah. It's like I said, I still want to get that three technique and that edge yep. rusher short up, but yeah, feel good. But they don't have, they don't have a bad unit. Yeah. Right. Like it, even the defensive line. You still have Walker on the other side of Sweat. Like he's not a bad player. Mm-hmm. You you would like an upgrade there, but 
they don't have a unit where you're like, that's our Achilles heel. Mm-hmm. It's like every unit can kind of hold their own. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then. There's we could. A, uh, there's a new Williams jersey in town. It's not, <laughs> yeah. it's not the pea coat. <laughs> yeah. No relation there, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. We'll see. Caleb and David. Maybe. Um, yeah. All right. On that note, we could turn the page. We could uh, get into uh, our ace, Justin Steele. Great sit down. Great dude. Great dude. I'm um, really excited to watch him here in a couple weeks. So uh, let's get to Justin Steele. Before we do, though, I want to talk about Chevy Drive Chicago. Uh, The auto show may be over, but the best deals at your local Chevy dealer are still going. It's time for a new car. Your local Chevy dealer is something for you. The all-new Equinox, Trax, and Blazer are SUVs you'll want to test drive in and drive off in. Uh, Giving everything from style to comfort, safety, and plenty of room, there's a Chevy SUV for you guys. There's one for me. So there should be one for you. And that's, that is the thing. Like they have, they have the greatest lineup of SUVs. They've got great customer service. They got great everything. So, uh, you have to go to Chevy drive, Chicago.com to find that dealer near you and they'll take care of you. So I got the chance to drive or ride in chief Chevy yesterday for the first time, as I was contemplating whether or not I was going to have to buy a Chevy myself because <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't find my car. Misplit dude. Where's my car? I Didn't misplaced miss- my car. Yeah. All right. Let's get a Chevy, Danny. Yeah. Right. Uh, head to ChevyDriveChicago.com to learn more about these cars and find your local Chevy dealer today. It's that simple, guys. Just go to ChevyDriveChicago.com, see everything they have to offer, and uh, be happy. That's all I got. Um, all right. Dave's not here. He's in Austin, by the way. He's not. It's, there's not yeah. a, a weird reason Dave's not here. No, we He's got just, beef with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so on that note, whoosh. All right. We are now in the interview portion of the show. We are joined by Chicago Cubs. Are you ready for this? Yes. Chicago Cubs ace, Justin Steele. Is that okay? Number one. The number <laughs> one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How was, uh, so obviously, yeah, like great year last year, man. Yeah, thank last you. Last two years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank uh-huh. you. Thank you, thank you. That was fucking awesome. Thank you. Like it yeah, was like, summer. <laughs> yeah, like it was, it's just so nice in this city when you, you know, you got that guy who could go out there and do Stopper. that, you know? Yeah. yeah he was that guy last year. It must be great. How was, uh, <laughs> I appreciate he's a, he's it, guys. He's the White Sox guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you didn't know that, he's the White So any like uh, curmudgeon comments, it comes from that place. Not yeah, yeah. Cool I, I'm jaded and <laughs> disheveled. <laughs> we, we have my boy, uh, Cease. Me and Cease are good friends. Yeah. That's, that's my guy. I just talked to him Bring this morning. Him over. Yeah. Okay. Should have brought him over. No, I mean like to the north side. Yeah. He was here at one point. He might be a teammate of yours. That's my guy. He's awesome. Did you ever? You, no, you wouldn't have played. So with them. we were. I was drafted in the fifth round. Mm-hmm. He was drafted in the sixth round. But he was drafted knowing that he had that Tommy yep. John surgery. So he like kind of stayed in Arizona rehab okay. and stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. He's a. Uh, first thing I noticed about him, he really hit the weights this off season. Oh. He was carved out of wood when I shook his hand this morning. Dude, he, he's a uh, he's a freak of nature athlete. He's uh, I remember when we was first drafted, we went and shot hoops like after practice or something one day, and like you could tell he probably didn't play a ton of basketball growing up, but the dude was like jumping up and like jumping out the gym, dunking like yeah. three sixty dunks. Like it was one like, of those what? guys. We're- yeah. It was unbelievable. Must be nice. Where yeah, that's, yeah, that's how what I was like. I was like just in the corner. I was in the corner just setting throwing up. Picks. Yeah, just yeah. set yeah. picks, yeah. throwing up shots. <laughs> Getting rebounds. No, no yeah. defense. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I was doing. Sorry, Hard one fouls. of us. Yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, we just played a little mini golf over there. That video will come out at some point. We talk a little bit about Kyle Hendricks. Obviously, I just said ace. How has it been with Kyle? Because obviously he he led that rotation, and he's from a from – a, Tenure standpoint, he's the, probably he's the, the leader of the, oh, yeah. the pitching Statesman, staff yeah. and whatnot. How's that your relationship been? How has he been helpful to your uh, career here so far? Our relationship's awesome. I mean, I, I feel like probably everyone would say that about Kyle. He does such a good job of connecting with every with everyone in the locker room, whether you're a pitcher or a position player or even a coach. He's just a great personality, someone that knows the game really well. He's always talking to everyone about it and stuff. And yeah, we went and golf the other day, and it was just a blast. I mean, he absolutely worked me out there, but he's he's just an awesome some guy just a great mind in the game from a pitcher's perspective like you're you're not throwing 100 miles an hour nor is he so has he been someone you could lean on from like a pure stuff standpoint oh yeah 100 you know, right? i mean you, you just watch he's one of them guys that his preparation is like flawless like nobody prepares more than he does and like watching him prepare like made me feel bad about my preparation mm-hmm. that kind of deal like he prepared that much so it just made me kind of like put myself in check like i need to be a little more responsible about how i go about these starts and stuff because you see him 
you know, he's been doing it for a long time, very successful career, World Series champion. Yeah. The list goes on and on. So you see him doing that kind of stuff. It makes you want to be, feel responsible what for What specifically too. about that? Like video work or? Yeah, just he, he'll he know the lineup that's – or about what the lineup will be that's upcoming, and he's watching video on every single one of their swings on guys that are similar to what he's throwing. He's finding holes. He's knowing what to go to and what counts. Like, like the pitching department will – kind of do that stuff for you but they don't even bother him because yeah, he's right. like he's yeah. doing it on his own mm-hmm. like he's already he's he's far and ahead of what you was going to give him probably mm-hmm. and like you you're just doing Let him him they like don't have to track his ipad yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not, not i was like what was, was actually it? a thing well it was johnny football remember that was like, the yeah. famous yeah, right. line in that doc he's like we looked at his ipad and he clocked exactly zero, zero yeah. minutes oh. of film time <laughs> dude broke my heart in college yeah when he, when he played oh, alabama yeah, that, you're yeah. a bama that fan was yeah. was unbelievable. that's, that's how he won the Heisman. yeah yeah so you're a Bama fan. Yep. Uh, who's your favorite Alabama football player of all time? Wow. Or give me a give me a, a couple. Like who's like Derrick Henry's a good one. Yeah, yeah. that's a really good one. He's a load. Um, Devontae Smith's a fun one. Yep. One Heisman. Mm-hmm. Um, dude, honestly, AJ McCarron. <laughs> yes, dude. Like that guy won like he three did. or four championships. Yeah. yeah. Like he was there the entire time. He stayed all years. Like that guy is an Alabama legend. I've got a personal vendetta against him. Oh no! Because well, nothing he did, but like I look, I would look at him and be like, "This guy's not good." So I'd, I'd yeah, be yeah, like, yeah. "LSU plus six, that feels pretty good." And I would, yeah. I lost more money betting against Alabama just because I didn't believe in AJ McCarron. Never, never caught on. Dude, I, I believed in him wholeheartedly. Yeah, I, bet. I wanted him <laughs> yeah. to come back. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like he, I, I just remember, I was like, this guy is not gonna lose the game. Like yeah. he will not go out there and lose it. Like, I love that. That era was the best Alabama football. Yeah, you're gonna be. Uh, you scared without Saban now? No, I mean, I like who we brought in. Saban's kind of sticking around, showing them the ropes and stuff. I think we'll be fine, especially with playoffs expanding. Yeah, I don't yeah, think I don't think it'll be too big of an issue. Yeah, yeah, but there's like a standard now. Yeah, and it's that standard is bust. pretty damn hard to keep up with someone new, right? I mean, yeah, but how many did we win? We won a lot. Yeah, you, yeah. you got to last won, lifetime. Yeah, like, it's kind of, I mean, we, it could be so much worse. Like, you, it, you, think about, you think about droughts and stuff, it's like we're, we were so spoiled while Saban was there. It's like, yeah. you know, if we just make the playoffs, like, I'll be fine. Yeah, and we know droughts based yeah. on yeah, the team yeah, that you play for. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, it could be a lot worse. Like, oh, yeah, we, we know. We in eight years. We yeah. know droughts, that's for sure. Um, obviously – Big news of the off season. You have a new manager. Yes. Uh, where were you when the news broke? What was your emotion? I was here feel? in Arizona in the weight room doing my normal like off season lifting and stuff. Um, I was with Keegan Noel, our strength coach, and I remember he got an email and it's kind of laid out everything that was happening, and we were just kind of like, huh, like what, like what does this mean? Da 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 da. Literally, probably five to ten minutes later, it was on the TV, and we were like, "Wow, that was fast! Like, mm-hmm. this is this is moving quick." So, I mean, same as everybody, just shock, just like yeah. surprised. Um, but you know, camp's underway, and you know, it's been great. Honestly, camp's been a lot of fun. Everyone's having a good time, and um, yeah, it's good to see everyone. What was? Uh, th- did you talk to Ross at all? Did you guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I sent him a text message, of course. You know, yeah. I loved him with all my heart. Yeah. Um, you know, always have a special place for him and stuff. Uh, but um, like I said, you know, spring's here now. Everyone's getting used to the new ways and stuff, and uh, I would say everything's moving in the right direction. What's ba- what's that been like? The new ways and how's Craig been so far? What's um, I mean, just with any ma- every manager I've played for is like everything's a little different, just different ticks and everything. And um, I would say one thing I've kind of I I personally have been doing is I'm working on like pickoff moves a little bit more, just doing different things. You know, we have like a little personal day where you can like work on what you want to work on. So like I take them that time to like do pickoff moves or work on my sinker, change up, different things like that. We were talking to a few guys at uh, White Sox camp this morning, Danny Mendick, and just talked about the evolution of the game a little bit. Do you think you would have had the success you're finding right now, like even four or five years ago when everybody was high and and four seam at the top of the zone or are you more suited for the game now with like that lefty sink and and ride 
Um, I think I would have been able to find success then too. Um, just because like my four seam is not a prototypical four seam. Mm -hmm. I kind of have a good bit of cut and I can get below and above a barrel yeah, varieties. Yeah. So the four seam that goes in on the righties that kind of, it's kind of different in its own regard. Mm -hmm. So I would, I, I would like to think I would been, a, been able to pitch then too. Um, and then I've really liked my slider. I feel like, like I said, I, I feel like I could have. Yeah. What what do you think it was like about last year that really kind of makes you made you take that next step? I think it was around the All Star break of twenty two. I kind of started making some strides, and um, it was oddly enough around the time I gave we gave birth to my son Bo. We were dad strength, yeah, a little yeah. bit of dad strength yeah, yeah. maybe. But mm. we, me and my son, we had the same birthday, and around that same time, like I kind of just started figuring out who I was, what was going to make me good in the big leagues. I kind of just started riding that. Um, like I said, facing all the righties that I do, I was just really getting that four seam in on righties, cutting it in on their hands, throwing sliders off of it, you know, and just opening up the other side of the plate, and then. As far as lefties, you know, I know how hard it is as a lefty versus lefty, like how mm -hmm. hard that can be. So I just kind of always keep that in the back of my mind. So it's the all-star break of the 2024 season. What What is your goal uh, from now through then and then, then through the end of the season in terms of, like, growth throughout the season? I haven't really thought about, like, mid-season goals too much. Obviously, it'd be awesome to make mm -hmm. the all-star team in, again and stuff. Um, something I really want to do is uh, get up and over 180 innings and start pushing for 200. Um, to me, like, I, like what I did last year was awesome. Like, But I think that 180 to 200 is kind of like a different game almost. Mm -hmm. Like, you're kind of – that's like workhorse status. Mm -hmm. So I kind of want to get into that realm. That's kind of my goal for the entire season. Where were you guys when – or how were you feeling when you got the Bellinger news? It was awesome. Um, we were in the locker room or at the at the facility, and uh, it, it was awesome. Uh, he, just having him in the clubhouse again, you know, we went to war with that guy last year. We were so close to making playoffs with that guy. Mm -hmm. And to get him back, you know, wearing the same threads, it's, it's really special. And, you know, it's, you know, it's awesome to have the player back, but to have the guy back in the locker room is even better. Yeah, no, that that's big, obviously. Yeah. And, and then does it kind of, does it kind of like elevate everybody? Like, what what do you guys talk about? Like team goals? Like, hey, like we got this is our division this year. Do you have I, things I think, like that that are said openly? I, th I think it's going like uh, without being said okay. in the locker room. Like we, like last year, we a lot of the guys kind of had a bitter taste in their mouth because mm -hmm. we were like really close, and then we kind of watched how playoffs unfolded. And, um, yeah, I think there's just, like, a nonverbal understanding in the locker room like right that. now. Like, that's like, hey, we're we're actually better than what we did last year. Let's actually take advantage of what mm -hmm. we have in front of us. What do you think ought to happen? Like, it just kind of ran out of gas or? I mean, it could be a number of things. Um, I can only speak for myself. Me, personally, I don't think I was running out of gas. I, I, I think, want to say I was throwing harder towards the end of the year, yeah. velo-wise and stuff. So, I was feeling good, and I was, like, I remember I was, you know, fired up. I, like each start, I knew it meant a little bit more. So I was, I really enjoyed that, you know, mm -hmm. playoff push. Yeah. Now you, you got, you were a 2020 pick, right? Or no, prior 2014. Out of high school. <clears throat> you were out of high school in 2014. 2014. Then, so you had a you because you didn't make it up until 20 because you had 2020 Tommy was John. the first year I was called up, didn't pitch. Then t I debuted in tw early 2021. Okay, that's what it was. Yeah. And TJ in 17. Because you kind of came out of nowhere because the pandemic year. Yeah. Obviously, there was no minor league baseball. And what? Did, how did how did you guys handle that? With in terms of preparation, were you like you know chopping wood down in Mississippi like, <laughs> to stay in shape? Or no, I remember during COVID, that was like that was like the first time I ever had a summer. I remember I went huh. home. And I was fishing. I was mm -hmm. fishing all the time, hanging out with my buddies, going in the woods, eating crawfish, sleeping on the creek, like camping out and stuff. And I remember that was like a blast. Once like COVID shut everything down, like I was had the first summer in my life, it felt like. So I actually enjoyed that stuff. And then once baseball got wrapped back up and stuff, the it was only the big leagues that was playing. Right. So they had an alternate site for like the taxi squad and stuff. So I was there and I was getting pretty much like big league reps. I was facing guys that was coming up and down mm -hmm. from the big leagues and it was like stats that weren't being counted, but it was like actual game like reps. So I was able to do do a lot of figuring out there and you know, I added the slider during that point. That really helped out a lot and just the reps, honestly, it helped a ton. 
I saw you. Uh, I think I think I saw you tweet earlier in the month about uh, watching show. Have a, have a session. And you're like, I'm gonna go buy some cars with this guy. This guy looks like yeah. a real deal. What I need I need to actually talk to him and like see which cards he, because like some of them are Japanese and like I, they look cool, but I don't know if that's the yeah. one I should be getting. Yeah. I need to like show him, and like be like, which card do you like? <laughs> should I get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, he's the stuff is silly. Like, yeah, I, yeah. Like it's it like kind of jumps like you see it and like man that's different and then you look at all the metrics and stuff and it's backing it up it's it's gonna be a lot of fun to watch is he as big a celebrity amongst players as he is amongst like baseball fans worldwide it seems like he's kind of getting to be that yeah his personality is definitely outgoing he like he has a aura and an energy about him he's he's a lot of fun to be around like he he says good morning every morning he talks to everybody like he wants to learn english like he's he's outgoing i like him a lot how is his english coming along he already, it's already better than Sayas. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I mean, but it's it's like that good. Like he yeah, like yeah. he speaks really good English already. Yeah, that's uh, how's he doing too? I mean, obviously that moment at the end of the year just could that could stick with anyone. You know oh, what I mean? Well, I mean, it can happen to anybody too. Yeah, I mean, totally. anything can happen. Dude, baseball's a funny sport. Dude, say is fine, dude. And he played such good defense for us last yeah, year. I like, couldn't believe that. Happened. Yeah, I mean, dude. That kind of stuff, you just got to forget about it. Shit happens all the time. And, dude, and we know he's going to be fine. Dude rakes, mm-hmm. strong as shit. Yep. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's a great ball. defender. I mean, he was winning gold gloves when he was playing. Yeah, it was, I think it's called the gold glove over there. But when he was in uh, – The equivalent. Pl- yeah, yeah, when he was playing overseas, yeah. he was winning them over there. So we know he's a good defender. And we're not Were you pitching that day? No. No, I was not. You're not, yeah. It's kind of it's kind of funny talking to – we interviewed the GM of the White Sox earlier in – like really his emphasis was like trying to find selfless guys and like trying to make cohesion with the roster kind of feels like that's going pretty strong you with guys you guys. Have. Yeah. You guys yeah. have oh, that yeah. in spades. It seems yeah. like. Oh yeah. Like nobody, and you know, you at some point in the minor leagues or in every, everyone's career, you come across like a team where it's like a little bit about one guy or whatever that like, that is definitely not the case with this team. And it wasn't the case with it last year. And we felt like we had something really good last year going so it's like a very good cohesion in the locker does it feel like is there like a certain guy in the clubhouse who's kind of like this is besides Hendricks, since you talked so glowingly about him already um i mean jan gomes is a great leader mm-hmm. okay yeah, that's yeah. that's someone that i would say maybe the public eye doesn't necessarily look at in that light but um being like he a, had a million big hits last year yeah too. being in the clubhouse with him I mean, like he's just a leader great leader dansby's a leader um, we I would say we got a bunch of guys who are a leader in their own right. Like okay. Belly, for instance. Like he's one of them guys that goes out there. He shows up every single day. Good energy. Doesn't matter what's going on. He's going to be the ball player that he is. Dansby, another guy, leads by example. Jan can be a vocal leader. Hap can be a leader. Like it's a just a really good cohesion in the locker room. Yeah. Do you have more confidence knowing the the kind to just like add, if I miss, it's not that big of a deal because of what's behind me. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, please hit it. How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> how how hard is you got to hit it out of the ballpark? Yeah. <laughs> how hard is it to develop that confidence as a pitcher um, at it's, any level? It's. I've talked about this before. It's like it's actually, it's really hard. And then once you start getting the reps and you start having the success, it builds very fairly quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I would say, like around that All Star break of 2022, I kind of just started figuring things out, figuring out who I was. I became confident in my process and everything, and things just kind of started building from there. The confidence started getting better and better, and the results kind of showed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think that was like one of the things with the pitch clock last year. It just felt like maybe the way you guys defended, and if you're rushed or any pitcher was rushed. The Cubs, like, it was just like it felt like that it fed into what they were good – what you guys were good at, mm-hmm. which was just playing defense, throwing the ball around, and and moving fast. And, yeah, and you guys – feel that too? Like, the pitch clock maybe, like, took – like, you guys took advantage of that new rule better than other teams? Um, I, I don't know if we took advantage of it better per se. I know for me, I can speak personally, it probably ended up helping me a ton because I felt like I was getting in the rhythm quicker, like I was – in rhythm at all times, was always ready to go. So for me, I felt like it kind of helped me. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like beforehand I possibly could have been taking a little too long. So okay. I kind of like the pitch clock, honestly. Yeah. I feel like it helps me get into a rhythm. And, like, if I need a breath or something, I can, like, step off, set it, and, like, walk around for a mm-hmm. second. 
Yeah, it's definitely getting me excited, like, talking to Hap yesterday and talking to you today. Because, like, you guys came in last year, and it was like – it was a team that the expectations were weird. It was like, all right, this is kind of like a funky, you know, yeah. c- Next, combination. Yeah. Like Swanson and yeah. Bellinger, and you know, it's like, well, we'll see. Can yeah. Bellinger bounce back? And like, he, I think the first series, like he half of horrible. the yeah half of the yeah. Cubs fans already quit on him. Yeah. You <laughs> know, horrible. I was like, this guy's this guy's terrible. And then here we are, fast yeah. forward nine months later, sign him, <laughs> yeah. you cheapos. You know what I mean? It's funny how that works. It man. is, yeah, man. It is it funny how it works. And now it's like. You guys turn into like a not a ragtag group, but just an unlikely team to be in where it's like, hey, I'm excited to see how this team grows. Like, are they going to ascend and kind of build off that? And it, I mean, people should be excited. It's, yeah. a, it's an exciting team. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. you look around, all the gold in the infield and in the outfield, guys You're coming adding up. Adding PCA to that. That's too. what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, yeah. we got a lot of guys that are really good coming up. So. It's an exciting team. I, it's a definitely a year to be excited about the Cubs. It's a great team to watch. I because I I'm not gonna lie. Like I fell off of baseball when it became kind of like let's sit around and wait for a three run bomb. Like the pitch clock and like you guys, you know, not like a ton of home run power. It's just a lot of gaps and run running the base baseball. Basketball. Team. Yeah, yeah, it's a baseball, baseball team. team. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's baseball. Team. It's great to watch. It's a yeah. great product. It's great to play with it. Yeah, I bet. The PCA back there is he like the, oh. it's, as advertised? I've seen Superman. Like a, I saw him take one. It was last spring training. I think we might have been out here. I saw him take one fly ball. He made one of the absolute best catches I've ever seen running down the ball. I'm like, that guy is the best center fielder in baseball on the planet right now. I don't need to see anymore. Yeah. He's that good defensively. Yeah, he's that good. They grade him out at 80. Yeah, he's 80 literally played yeah. like a quarter of a season and like everyone knows it already. Yeah. Like yeah. He's that good in center. He's a. He's a deer. Yeah, he's like a deer. He like glides, <laughs> he like glides to the yeah. ball. He's yeah. like not doesn't look like he's moving that fast, but he's just gliding across the his outfield. angles it's and crazy. his attack routes are just it's it's like Jerry Rice precision. Yeah, it's, it's incredible crazy. to watch. So gold up, gold at first with Bellinger. Gold second. Gold short. At short. Gold up the gold up the middle. Yeah. Now you got PCA. You got gold. I mean, you're a gold good fielder. Left. You got yeah, Kyle Hendricks has won a ton of gold gloves. Yep. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Like five of them. Six. Great of them. Great D. Yeah. Defense wins championships. Yeah, offense. It's not does bad not to have behind you there. No, no. no. You said deer. Is that uh? Do you hunt at all? Talk to me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> These guys just started hunting, and yeah, they think obsessed. that they're fucking. I, I grew it. up. Yeah. I grew up hunting, running dogs. Um, I, w- I would say I do more just like shooting now to put meat in the freezer so it's like we got okay. we have a lot of white-toed deer where i grew up and like now it's like we need some deer meat in the freezer so it's just, gun or bow i haven't done much bow hunting okay. i've done some like we'll, target we'll stuff yeah i've done some like target stuff with bows but when, it, when i've actually been hunting it's all yeah. been like shotgun or rifle did you bring any of that meat up for the season i have not it's all okay. at my uh my mother's house all right even, well, we're, even we're basically I, uh, neighbors, so come on over, throw it yeah, on the trailer. I, uh, yeah. Even when I go tuna fishing in the off season, I, I, the tuna meat that I keep, I, I send a little bit up here, but I keep most of it. You, you keep months. talking about the tuna fishing. How much tuna do you just pack in the freezer? Like tuna is a big fish. Yeah, we took uh, we took a trip after the season this year. Me, me and some of the guys, we caught three tuna that were all between 140, 150 yeah. pounds, Ooh. and um, we all took a like our fair share of it shipped mm-hmm. it home or drove it home or whatever so it's a lot of meat it can last you like a year uh, yeah oh yeah. yeah a long yeah. time it's good tuna too i'm sure yeah it's great it's yeah, delicious yeah. right off right out of the water we sliced it. off yeah. 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 where'd you say it's at where do you guys wish um this was out of venice louisiana so gotcha. like you go to new orleans which is like the bottom of the u.s mm-hmm. then you go like another hour south and this is oh, like wow. when a hurricane comes through like this place is underwater oh yeah. shit so yeah. it's like the very bottom okay. yeah, 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 yeah. backwards like true detective shit I'm yeah, sure. yeah like it's deep it's deep down there <laughs> and then I, I was told to ask this as well that you dodged marty mush in his uh pitching challenge looks like his it was a good challenge. idea <laughs> it looks like it was a good idea the guy rakes um something cut we, that Cut that part. Yeah, we so, don't want any confidence for Marty. Something we definitely need to get in the works. I still don't think he would get a hit off me. <laughs> I, I still don't. Think don't. So either. I saw. I forgot who I saw. He just faced and got a hit off. He went like one for five, and then he had a graphic with him one for five, Trout oh and one, oh for one, uh, <laughs> show, uh, Shohei oh for two, and it's just like, come on. Is there anyone more confident in the world right now <laughs> no. than Marty Mush? No. He's on top of the world. He's, he's getting new hair. Yeah, yeah he, he's, got, he's, he, he got new teeth. You should have seen me. his teeth kills me. two years ago. Yeah. He had the worst snaggle teeth of all time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's got, he's he's a handsome guy now who can who can rake. He's a new he's basically man. Basically, Bellinger. He's a new yeah. man. Yeah, he, <laughs> he kills me. He cracks yeah. me up. Yeah, he's yeah. a funny guy. 
Yeah, that's good. Well, all right then, man. We appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. It was me. great chopping it up. I didn't yeah. have anything else? No, I don't well, think so. Yeah. Good. Well, sweet, man. We're excited. Like we said, it's going to be awesome. opening day. Yes. Can't wait. See you tomorrow. Yeah. To, and tomorrow, yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. You versus Copac. You, uh, Looking forward to it. You gonna you gonna shove tomorrow? Or are you gonna get lit up and give me some confidence in the season? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'm definitely gonna make, like hone in the four seam slider, make sure they're where I want them to be, and then I definitely want to work on my other my other offerings as well. I'm as soon as you leave this house, I'm gonna hit up everybody I know. And be like, <laughs> He's throwing four seam fastballs well, that's no on your fist. To everyone. Like, yeah. everyone already knows I'm. I I threw, clear like, those yeah. hips a little bit, open up, and shoot for that left center. <laughs> I threw, gap I threw like ninety five percent four seams and sliders last year. So like everyone, yeah, yeah everyone knows it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna tell me opposite, I, Dave, and have them ready. See, let them yeah, adapt. Yeah, that's true. They they need to work on yes. their on their craft a little bit. Um, I, I <laughs> like watching. You're different pitchers because you throw much harder. But you you remind me of Mark Burley with how in the okay. pitch clock obviously probably helps us a little bit. Get the ball, throw the ball. A long time. Yeah. I, I mean, oh, he, he was great. Great. Chicago oh, really legend. Good. Yeah, yeah Chicago that. legend. Yeah. yeah. Gold glove guy too. Yeah, yeah. Well, year I mean, over year, but it's like that's every time I watch, I'm like, Pff, they just fucking uncovered a Mark Burley in the fifth <laughs> round. <laughs> he's been in the minor leagues for seven years, and he's placing in the Cy Young race. What this, the fuck? This is because well, y'all got new, ceased though. Y'all got ceased from us for and, like maybe another. He might be gone already. But you had by it. the end of this interview. <laughs> but you had it. You might be have have him this year. <laughs> I mean, we did have him. Yeah. Fifth and six round again. picks, back to back. Back to back. That's a yeah. uh, oh, god damn it. This is becoming one of my favorite unintentional bits is when we start talking Cubs and Dave gets mad about the White Sox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I gonna piss you off. <laughs> no, yeah, this, yes, this please, please. absolutely. The White yeah. Sox were on me in high school too. <laughs> who, 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 who was the scout? Who was the scout? Oh, what's his name? Hughes. Hughes. Something I don't think Hughes. I know him. Warren Hughes, maybe. <laughs> I was like, but here's the thing I'm like 98% sure they would have ruined you so you dodged a big bullet you dodged a big bullet you're you're in the right spot you're on the north side where apparently they uncover fifth rounders that go and throw Cy Young innings <laughs> after oh, Tommy man. John and after pandemics and they just pop out of nowhere like they've been growing on trees or something that's yeah, we got to get you yeah. reunited with Cease. That would be great. I would love that. Oh, dude, Cease nice little, man. nice little one too. Yeah, he's he's big into frisbee golf. Yeah, there, yeah, we yeah, heard he does, like, that. Yoga, he's like, right? He's, like, he's opening on his, his own frisbee golf course. Oh, yeah. We should go do that. Like he's like into that's, it. Into yeah, he's like into yeah. it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I heard that. Yeah, I heard he's that a weird too. guy in like a good way. He's got a yeah. lot of. He likes stoking a is lot it, of fire. Does it quirky? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's a good yeah, way like, to put it. Like a good quirky. Yeah. Is, doesn't he wear 84 because it's like some yoga number, like some vinyasa yoga? It might be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I could see yeah. Him. Were you familiar with David all before this? No, probably not. Well, uh, to, I've seen him and like, heard yeah, him Yeah, through concert. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but this has been like a, just a fun part. Like we did that thing with Hap, and Hap was just like questioning about he the white needle on him. <laughs> just, just poking. No. Poking. <laughs> it was, it was like, great, man. I, I don't think the players on either side of town understand the dynamic between Cubs and Sox fans. Like there's obviously – it's Cubs Nation. It's it's a national brand, and White Sox is, were tucked away in the little corner of the city, and there's not a ton of us. So obviously we have the little brother syndrome when it comes to the Cubs because you got Wrigley Field and and Wrigleyville and the Ivy and the sold out stadium and obviously the recent championship a few years ago and now you guys are already on the upswing again after that quick little rebuild and it's it's a, a very fast rebuild it's a big time big time jealousy thing but I know exactly <laughs> like we know how it goes you know so but the players don't understand that well they I don't, understand it yeah <laughs> you'll, you'll you'll get it the the more you live here yeah. I think so. he gets it. <laughs> he, get it. He, he knew how to just how to get to you. Uh, the White Sox were all over me. Yeah. <laughs> they were. He was at he was at all my games. Yeah. <laughs> all if the Cubs didn't take him in the sixth. The White Sox the Cubs, probably take him in the seventh. This might piss you off anymore. The Cubs were the last team to come in my house. And yeah, yeah I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they fine knew what guys. they had though. That's yeah. like I I I've I'm resigned to the fact that they're never gonna at least as the status quo is right now they're never going to be in the market for like the a-listers i don't know if you remember the machado and harper chase that mm -hmm. like crushed me <laughs> because we thought we were going to get one of those two and 
I just wish they could find guys. They put a White Sox Harper jersey on the Jordan statue at the United Center. Yeah. It's part of their pitch. Wow. Yeah. And Damn. didn't even make him an offer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, come play for us. We'll put a jersey on a, a statue. I thought they did, but it was just crazy no, they, incentive base no, or some shit. He said it he said it on this uh, Smitty podcast that they never they, they just never like did. ghosted him. But those, uh, for those listening and watching at home, no one could see his eyes besides me crack through here. It's there's a lot of anger right now. Yeah. There's a lot of rage. There's a lot of rage. It's, it's yeah. that meme with the the mask on yeah. with the yeah, guy crying the guy behind crying it. Yeah. Behind the mask. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we could uh uh, yeah, we could just wrap this up. Let's worry yeah. about our good mojo and our good vibes yeah. on the north side. And for sure. This got me fired up for Wrigley. I can't wait for the summer. I'm excited for tomorrow. Dude, I'm ready to get yeah. ready. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. excited for tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be wearing fun. the hat, too. Oh, yeah, for sure, guys. Yeah, yeah. dude. Our guy. Yeah, I honestly thank my wife. She was like, wear that hat. They'd love that. Yeah, yeah. no, honestly. Yeah. That was sweet. This was Shout first out thing Yeah. Shout out Mr. Steele, for sure. Thank you, dude. We appreciate it. Thank you all. I appreciate it, guys. All right. Thanks again to Justin Steele, the absolute man. Our ace. Yes. Day one. All right, the man. Uh, really excited to watch him pitch this year. So now we're going to get into some college hoops. Before we do that, I want to talk about Dave and Buster's. Uh, the chance of getting a perfect bracket is one in one hundred and twenty point two billion. So best of luck uh, for the rest of us. Instead of not watching after our bracket is busted, why not uh, be rewarded for it? Uh, this March, when you lose, you win at Dave and Buster's throughout the tournament. We're washing away your sorrows with $2 beers. Terms and conditions do apply. And anyone whose bracket has been busted can DM Dave and Busters with a picture of their bracket across social media handles. In reward, Dave and Busters will be giving away 1 million chips of free gameplay while supplies last. Terms and conditions apply in that as well. But hurry up. All chips will be given away and must be redeemed at your local Dave and Busters before the tournament ends. So you basically want to have the worst bracket on the first day. Yeah, because then you're going to have a great day at Dave and Busters. Yeah. I'll be at the ski ball machine though. You need some. I'll probably be playing ski ball by five o'clock on Thursday. You need a good pick me up. Yep. Nothing better than uh, Dave and Buster's. Two uh, two dollar beers will pick you up real quick. Yeah. Yes, that's nice. So come to Dave and Buster's for two dollar beers all tournament long, and DM your busted bracket to Dave and Buster's for free gameplay while supplies last. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, so now we are joined by bracketologist uh, Tate <laughs> from Ohio and uh, Liam Blutman. Uh, welcome in, guys. What's going on? Yeah, I know this. You didn't say where I'm from, but you said you're <laughs> California. You're from uh, Las Vegas. The same places, yes. Uh, I did grow up in Vegas. I was born in California. There you go. And I'm a former bracketologist. So we know your. Do we get credit for knowing your bio? Between the two of us, we a know. A bit, it. yeah, yeah. You guys thought that. That was mm -hmm. impressive. What do you mean former? Um, I did the whole bracketology thing for like two or three years. Oh, so you're not a, you're, you're not as sharp. Getting... Is that what you're telling me? Am I getting a has been bracketologist right I, now? I, uh, I think, I don't even know what years I did that, but I did do it twice. I liked doing it and then it was just too much work and nobody actually cared except for what Lunardi and Palm, et cetera, said. So there was no point doing it. Damn. So you're college football one. Are you college basketball two? Uh, formerly. <laughs> Formerly, okay. Where I, I was again, I've yes. told this to people. Former top five mind in college basketball as recent as last season. I see you sound like a, <laughs> you sound like a shell of yourself. You're like a as I, like, Scrooge around Christmas. That's you around March mania. Because they've kind of, I don't know, they're trying to sabotage this sport, and we I are agree. seeing it this March. We're all seeing how they're trying to sabotage. Yeah, blood <laughs> Do you think they're doing this on purpose so they can argue yes, for an expanded field? 100 percent Yeah. Virginia is going to be the first thing on the PowerPoint when they're trying yep. to lobby 96 teams. Just fucking They'll mad ruin at it. us for no bio and he comes in and he's just fucking Eeyore. He's right just, out of the he's game. angry. He's an angry guy. Eeyore. <laughs> you know what Eeyore is? I know. I just, that you might have you might have done the voice animation. I, <laughs> <laughs> that just takes me way back to I've I've been called Eeyore before, just <laughs> not in years. That's that's, Listen, a, that's a tough one. You're, I feel like you're usually your your red hair is a dominant trait for so for someone to be nicknaming you Eeyore or anything other than ginger related you must have really been eoring out there mm -hmm. it's what uh, you're a ball of energy normally though you need a winnie the pooh in your life man <laughs> yeah. no i don't like this I don't, I don't like that every time blubbin comes on the program it's just like a you know we're re rehashing old wounds first it was a ginger draft now it's this so i apologize for the year comment that's all good i like the ginger draft that's fun with that yeah, yeah it was fun yeah it made me feel at home <laughs> <laughs> Tate is college basketball your number one college football is definitely one okay okay um, but I would say like it to, in terms of like knowing the sport knowing the game I know basketball the best mm -hmm. so I like I mean 
I just came off a of high school basketball season, so I wasn't, you know, every Monday through Friday watching the games, more of like a casual Saturday type guy. But once the tournament gets going, I lock in and can know what I'm talking about there. Yeah, because I'm at the stage in my career where, like, I learn what's going on conference champ, conference yeah. uh, tournament week, mm-hmm. and I kind of play my way in shape from there, you know. Uh, so I kind of am looking to learn and talk about some yeah. of these teams that I may not know about. You know who's hot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Helps. Well. That helps. That does time. help yeah. for sure. Yep. Uh, so I think maybe we'll go region by region. I think that's a good way to do this, right? And let's start top left, the east, obviously the big dog, UConn. Uh, in that region. Woof, woof. Woof, woof. Is mm-hmm. that, uh, as far as overall number one seeds, is this one of the best that we've seen, Tate? Or where, where do you have UConn in, in the pantheon of number one overall seeds? I talked to Titus the other day about this, and I thought that if, if it came down to it right now and you said, would you rather have UConn or would you rather have the field? I said I would take UConn because that's a team that I can trust. It's a team that I know has elite players, can win in multiple ways, great coach. Um, he's, his feeling was that this, if UConn got upset early, would not be in the top 10, 15 of – most shocking things he's ever seen in tournament history. Um, they did get kind of a tough draw. Uh, the region, they have Auburn that they would have in the Sweet 16. Uh, they would have Iowa State in the Elite Eight, perhaps. Illinois uh, just had a good run in the Big Ten tournament. Um, but at the end of the day, if you had to choose anyone, you're crazy if you're not taking UConn. Blop, and you got anything to tally off that? Yeah, I'm, a, I, I'm big on this conference tournament tr- uh, champions trying to win the NCAA tournament trend. Seven of the last nine conference, uh, national champions did not win their conference tournament. That includes UConn last year. Marquette won the Big East. Yep. Uh, this region, for some reason, again, I don't like this committee. I don't like what they did. The East region has four of the biggest conference tournament champs. UConn, Auburn, Illinois, Iowa State, all coming into the tournament red hot in different and impressive ways. Those teams, the probability dies down of how many games you could win in a row. UConn would need 13 straight wins to win the national championship. Like, that's just hard for me to invest in, even though I think that this is, I wouldn't say far and away the best team in the country, but I think them and Houston are a cut above everyone else, even with Houston's 97-point loss to Iowa State. Like, throw it away. I really do not care about what happened that night. Um like the the UConn Auburn game would be box office though, I, I would love to see that. I think Auburn could knock them off. Just yeah, I don't know. I think you're kind of, I don't know. The tournament's unpredictable. I don't want to say you're foolish because we don't have UConn in your final four because they could very well use, lose to FAU in the second round. Uh, why FAU's an eight seed and why they're not, you know, teetering on that ten line playing a day? And I don't know. Reputation from last year, kind of weird that we're doing that. Mm-hmm. But what about Iowa State? Because it seems like the team that everyone loves the most in that region, besides uh, UConn, obviously, seems to be Auburn. I'm mean, getting a lot of Auburn yeah. steam, but it seems like Iowa State and uh, Illinois are the two ones that are higher seeded. But everyone's kind of laying off. Is that just traditional things, or what? What do you think about? I that feel team? like if Iowa State was the two seed in Purdue's bracket, everyone would have uh, Iowa State in the Final Four. Mm-hmm. I would, I, I would I would attest to that. <laughs> yeah. so are you guys high on Iowa State? I don't think I'm. I'm going to be honest. I just the blandest kind of take here. I don't think we live in a world where Iowa State could win a national championship. So for that reason, I'm out on them. Mm-hmm. What I, does that mean? <laughs> I just don't like. I just don't. <laughs> they don't have a strong brand. I no, because you could win without having a strong brand. It's just like. Iowa State, like Ames, Iowa's your city of national champions. Like, I don't think we live in that world. Okay. That's all I'm saying. All right. Sorry, clones, fellas, and fillets, but I don't think that they have. <laughs> I don't. You like that? Fillets. Yeah, I did like that. Thank you. I'm surprised that one hasn't, uh, like, other people have taken over. That, yeah. I'm going to start using it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Iowa State has the consistent offense to get done at the end okay. of the day. And I think they're on the upset watch if they draw Drake in the second round. Drake's a very popular pick right mm-hmm. now. And also, I mean, we just spent the last four or five days watching Illinois run through the Big Ten. And Illinois, they're going to get up and down. They're going to score. Can Iowa State score with them? And Illinois is going to have the best player on the court when they match up. So I don't know. I'm not high on Iowa State. Um, I think UConn did get a little bit tough of a draw. Like as soon as the brackets came out and they saw that Auburn was the four in that bracket, everyone's like, whoa, what is that? Um, but at the end of the day, I, I will be rocking with UConn 
Okay. Yeah. So you're are you good as UConn your pick as well, Blutman? Yeah, I have them beating Drake in the Elite Eight. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So I have so, Drake making a run. So then give me your give me your so would that be your dark horse? Give me your dark horse for that region that could win that region. I like yeah, I think I guess it would be Drake then. Like I I don't think San Diego State could win the region and I don't think FAU can, whatever. So if, if we're talking about any team outside of the top four seeds that could win the region and steal it you know, I, I would say it's Drake. Uh, in quad one games, the best scorer in the country is Tucker DeVries, who plays for Drake. His dad coaches him. And in five games against quad one opponents, he's averaging like 25.8 points per game. He's he's go-to player. Go get a bucket when you need it. And he'll figure it out and he'll get it done. He's a very fun player to watch. People are going to fall in love with him. Uh, in this tournament and drake also has experience they've got guys that have been here multiple yep. times and they're hungry and they want to get this done so badly and i think that they have a great team build to do it i was on drake last year i was th- yeah. that game against miami they yeah. were up like Ooh. double digits the whole game scored like one point in the final seven horrible there's a horrible choke job but i will say that if i was scrolling through and i saw somebody if I saw him talking on TikTok about Drake, mm-hmm. I'm favoring it and taking a screenshot to remember to take Drake. Like <laughs> yeah. that's how good of a sales job you just did for Drake. I Thank haven't you. made my official bracket yet. Like yeah. I wait until the plans are done and everything. Blutman, you can advance Drake pretty <laughs> yeah. far. From yeah. That was pretty yeah, impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a dark horse in that region? No, I was gonna say before that that I, I like I don't like anyone outside the top four. I don't like the six eleven matchup. I mean, Drake is the popular pick too. Which scares me. Is yeah, yeah. I, don't I, like too I, don't, I don't like people being all in on the the popular picks. Scary. Yeah, yeah, and I think I mean, UConn at the one is too good to FAU and Northwestern. I'm not concerned about that. And like an early sweet, and then once it gets into the Elite Eight or Sweet Sixteen and Elite Eight, like I'm rolling with the best coach yeah. with the best team and the best players. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, we'll go down then. We will go Wait, down. Can I give one more Nolan Drake. Yeah, I'm please. Too. Thank you. Um, they're very good at limiting opponents off the offensive glass. Uh, they're first in the country for their uh, offensive rebound, like prevent pre- preventing of it. How the wording? You guys know I'm. I know what you wordings mean. Wordings are. Yeah, they keep they you box off the out. offensive glass. They box yes. out. Yeah. Again, every defensive re- rebound possible, first in the country, and and that's so that, that's good. Stuff. That's the type of stat that I like. You can't and have they shoot the three yeah. very well. Okay. Um, the they, West. UNC is the number one. Arizona is the number two. Obviously, two classic. Well, I got teams. a question for that already for our former bracketologist here. Do mm-hmm. you, Bloodman, do you buy into the committee setting up matchups like that? Like, uh, is it a yeah, coincidence? Yeah, I genuinely think that they, like, for example, I think Mississippi State and Michigan State are playing each other because they thought it'd be fun to have MSU <laughs> versus MSU. <laughs> I wasn't necessarily talking about the. <laughs> were, you talk, were you talking about <laughs> no, I know. against Drake and all Iowa? Well, I, no, I was talking about Arizona's best player came from North Carolina, and I and also I, think they do that. Yes, and then we have the whole PMT bracket, which we can get into. I think later, they but. do that as well, and they also were then like, "Oh wow, people are really taken aback by this pod." Yeah, let's make them play the last game possible in the first round. <laughs> I'm still dying. They're all doing this stuff's all on purpose. There, yeah. There's about five different examples of of way too coincidental things. What well, that and you that, went with? M- yeah, I think MSU versus that, MSU was that, done that, diabolically. Iowa State's head coach TJ Otzelberger coached at South Dakota State. Oh, that's weird. They're playing in the first round. Yeah. Uh, the Dana Altman and Creighton connection that we could see in the second round. All this stuff's a joke. The committee did an <laughs> awful job this year. I hate each and every one with, of them. And to be honest, after what we saw from Virginia last night, they're all like, uh, we could fire them all with cause. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Go off. Yeah, go off. Sorry to interrupt. No, you're, yeah. good. you're good. You're good. Um, I was angry. So, uh, Eeyore's angry. There we go. It's on fire. Let's go. You're like the air conditioner. And, uh, uh, what's, what's the fucking movie with the blanket? Brave little toaster. Brave little toaster. Brave toaster. Yeah. yeah. You got the, you got the air conditioner energy. Yeah. Wow. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fozzie bear. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. What are we seeing in this region? Uh, I would say that clearly North Carolina is not as much of a f- favorite to be picked, uh, to the final four as UConn. That's easy to say, right? For sure. And I I think, you know, again, to go off what Blutman was saying, like, can you close your eyes and see Iowa State representing the Final Four? Can you not close your eyes and see Tom Izzo playing in the second weekend? 
Like the fact I know Michigan State's not as good as they are, and I know Michigan State hasn't had the greatest season, and they're nineteen and fourteen. But can you not close your eyes right now and see Tom Izzo playing in the Sweet Sixty? Would so, you not hate to see Tom Izzo across from you in the round of thirty-two? So here's uh, the thing, I've this is one team I've actually watched a little bit this year. Michigan State's bad. There was uh, an infamous Michigan State moment from you guys this year. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Very infamous. They're bad. Yeah. They're bad. I get your point. Mm-hmm. And sure, that stands because funky stuff always does that for the march. And, you know, Syracuse has been the king of that late, you know, yeah. low seed and somehow advancing. I don't know if I see it with this team. But, but it's you know. just something about those colors in March, too. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, mm-hmm. you know. So that's a good. Who do you, who anybody in that vein for you, Blotman, in the West? Uh, I think that this region stinks out loud. I think it's wide open. I'm not in on St. Mary's this year. I'm not in on Michigan State. I'm not too keen on North Carolina. I don't really care about Alabama. Clemson is awful. Should not even be near the six line. Baylor's whatever. This is the worst team Colgate's had in a while. I hope they do well, but I don't see it. Dayton's terrible. Should not be a seven. Arizona's going to Arizona. We know what happens with them. And Long Beach State fired their coach a week ago who's still coaching. This entire <laughs> region's a joke. I'll say this, Blutman. You, you don't talk like someone who's a retired bracketologist. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> you sound March, like... March gets uh, <laughs> the worst of me or the best of me, however yeah. you see it. Someone who's been fighting for tenure for years. That's what you sound like. He's just mad at the system. I I, it, it, I don't know, like. I'm very anxious and and afraid that they're gonna make this a 90 16 bracket. So I'd say the Drake uh, equivalent into this region is New Mexico. Everyone's all over them. I'm all over them too. And yeah, they're gonna get mushed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're favorite. I thought you were gonna give me more confidence. I I'm so, I have I I I have them in the elite eight as well. I was dangerously close to having them in my final four right off the bat. Like this team has been the team all season or all more prime uh, bracketology season where they're the Mountain West team that's being left out and forgotten about. Like they're the team that's on the bubble and has to play themselves in. They have to win the Mountain West conference tournament to get in. It was always a joke. They were always the first or second best team in this conference. Like they're they're first on Bartorvik in the conference right now as well. I think they're ranked twenty sixth or something in the country on Bartorvik. Well, I love using that, Bartorvik. That's a word I've never heard before. <laughs> Bartorvik. <laughs> yeah, it, it's Ken Palm, but it's free and it's better. Okay, no okay. brainer. Okay, um, no brainer. Yes, uh, New Mexico's very good. They're loaded and everything, blah, 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 well coached. Patino now has to – look, he's got chip on his shoulder. I've got – they left my dad out the tournament. The fire turns up. I've got to go win for my dad now. That could help. I don't know. That's a storyline I might have just made up. But <laughs> but New Mexico's, New Mexico's a very good and dangerous team. They do things well on both sides of the floor. Their efficiency numbers are really good. Jalen House is a guard that could take over a game and any chance he wants. They have a kid, Jamaro Baker, who played at Kentucky, Arizona, and Fresno State that was a highly thought of recruit. And he's only on this team to snipe three pointers, and he does it very well. They have Jamal Mashburn Jr. as well. They have Nelly Jr. Joseph down low, and uh, this this one. Kid, yeah, you guys might have made a mistake, and <laughs> you are an encyclopedia. Uh, this they they have this one guy. I can't think of his name. Uh, Phil Murgis or something. He he's from Finland. He played at Dayton. He shoots his free throws very weird, way off to the right. Uh, Mantis. He, he, he's a no, no, not like Mantis. Like he there's a free throw line. This in the middle. He's like where Chief is. Like he oh, lines weird. up way to the right, and he huh. actually shoots the free throws very well. But um, you know, he's a good player as well. They have really good presence down low and everything. Like I like New Mexico. Uh, Words. Yeah, I was gonna say what he said, but he took a <laughs> lot of that. Um, I would. I will say that my, there's no meat left on that. Ball. Yeah, <laughs> uh, my take would be that if if there's gonna be like a, a a high seed coming into the final four, that you would take. I would take it out of the West region. I know people like Grand Canyon in the twelve five, Love New Mexico say. in the eleven six. So, and then with you know some of the top teams, North Carolina or Arizona or Alabama, playing up and down. I don't. Me personally, just as a basketball coach, like I would rather go into a game with a team that likes to get up and down and try and change what they do instead of trying to speed up a team that doesn't like to. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's always easier to slow it down. Mm-hmm. That's one of those. Personal question. I'm going to be in Dayton today for the game. Uh, should I bet the Flyers? I mean, I kind of have to because I'm going to be rooting for them, but really? should I feel good about the bet? Blutman? What? Both of you. Oh, no, I'm in. Yeah, you're All in. Ohio, Ohio. Especially yeah. with your Ohio. So 100%. a little biased. Yeah, I'm taking yeah. that. I don't know. I don't know. 
I, I like Nevada beat Dayton. <laughs> oh, okay. shit. All right. Um, I, and then I messed the kid's name up. It's Mustafa Amsil. I was going to correct you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, thank you. I was going to let it go. <laughs> and JT Toppin they have who uh, is not related to Obi Toppin. Just right. have to make sure that that's said. Sorry. Rico. Yeah, we don't need the community notes under our tweets. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Thank you, Danny. Yep. And I love Grand Canyon in this region. Okay. All right, so give me your pick, both of you guys, and then give me your uh, someone else to give a look. Two, Blotman. Uh, I have North Carolina being New Mexico in the Elite Eight. North Carolina gets a cupcake draw as they get Grand Canyon in the Sweet 16 in New Mexico in the Elite Eight. Uh, Grand Canyon, once upon a time, beat San Francisco. Uh, and the next day or whatever was favored against South Carolina by four and a half points. Shows how good that Grand Canyon team is and how far South Carolina's come. I'll go Arizona to represent him in the final four. I would say that, you know, he makes a good point about New Mexico, but at the end of the day, if you're going to take a two seed over an 11 seed in the Sweet 16, I'm down with that. I think North Carolina is going to be your first team, first high seed, high one seed that's going to be knocked out of the team. Mm, mm, okay. It could be, I, I don't know, I'm enamored with good coaching, so I could see that in the round of 32. But then in that third game, you know, they're going to run into a team that wants to play just as fast as they will and who's going to outlast the other one. So I'll take North Carolina being your first one out, and I'll take Arizona to represent. I like it. I like a take like that. Uh, before we move on to the other side, I want to talk about Stella Blue Coffee because at Stella Blue Coffee, we believe that good coffee is one of life's non-negotiables. Stop drinking those boring, tasteless, big coffee beans and turn to Stella Blue. Remember, your mornings are sacred. It's time to start treating them that way. Not only are Stella Blue Coffee's premium beans sourced from the most rich coffee rich geographies on earth but they're also big cat taste and approved which is obviously more important cell blue coffee's delicious roasts are available in cold brew k cups ground and whole bean formats to seamlessly fit into your morning coffee routines oh and every bag sold helps save dogs so head to your local jewel osco or mariano's today to find the very best deals on stella blue coffee or use promo code MID for 20% off any order of $25 or more on StellaBlueCoffee.com. Take back your morning with Stella Blue Coffee. All right, let's check out the other side here. Um, Houston, obviously, like you said, second best team probably in the field. Mm -hmm. um, Marquette's a two. Marquette's a team that always scares me, especially now they, they rely so much on the three-point shot. Um, what are you guys seeing in this region? Well, my, my first eye pops to Kentucky as a three seed. Um, I know it's not the NBA where it's like a star-driven <laughs> business, but Kentucky has two of the top ten players in the country. Yep. So I would like to roll I, – I think this one, I think Houston is head and shoulders better than everyone in this bracket. But if you're going to give me two of the top ten players in the country, I'm going to roll with them. Um, so I would say Houston and uh, Kentucky have a pretty pretty nice path to matching up there in the South uh, Elite Eight. But I, I like Kentucky and the upside that they have offensively. The issue is that they are – beyond the joke defensively mm -hmm. and they as we saw in the sec tournament against a and m they they struggled to find their offense for a few minutes and before you even know it they're down 10 15 points because they can't generate a single stop and when we get to these games on a neutral floor if you're not hitting your shots and the other team's hitting their shots and you're getting down like that now you're facing adversity you're kentucky the entire arena uh that's you know how do I uh, they're against you yeah yeah most of the arenas well. against you because BBN travels well yes uh and that play you know that that, that that's tough for some of these who's gonna get them though blood what do you think about that? uh Texas Tech I think oh, I really wow. like Texas Tech okay. um Texas Tech has good efficiency numbers on both ends of the floor they're 23rd offensively 48th defensively when you're looking for a national champion you're looking for for t uh, top 40 in both of those. Texas Tech's right on the outside, though. They shoot the three really well. They have two kids that shoot over 40% from three, which I like, and that doesn't even include Pop Isaacs, who's a big shot taker and maker. So I really like t uh, Texas Tech's makeup. And then I also wanted to point out uh, the rigged matchups that the committee does. Um, Thank you. So if you look at uh, Nebraska, who is playing Texas A&M, um, just a few days ago, Nebraska's athletic director, Trev Alberts, left for Texas A&M. He did. He did. Yeah, and they are playing in the first rounds. So How do you like that? Want, that's, that's completely set up. Yeah. And I like that they do that, too, though. Do you? I yeah. hate it. I You're hate, out? Yeah. Why, why, why not give us some storylines? He's a purist. We should be getting the actual matchups that we're supposed to get. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Loyola uh, Chicago taking down Illinois. 
was oh, electric. Years ago. Yeah. It was great. I, I, great I state storyline here. I uh, I had Loyola Chicago in the uh, Final Four when they made it. Fun fact. Did oh, you? Yeah. In what? But what I mean, are you a one bracket guy? Yeah, I and am, you had Loyola. In the I football? mean, like I'll make a few others, but it's like I'll have like mainstays, right? So I really liked what I saw from Loyola Chicago when they beat Florida in December, and then I kind of just grew attached to that team. So in every bracket, I had them making a run. I was big on Nevada too, who they had to play in the Sweet Sixteen, so it was tough to go against those fellows. Um, but they had some turmoil brewing in the locker room, I think, or maybe that was a year after. I don't really remember. Um, and then I wanted to point out for this region, um, DJ Burns, obviously. People are loving him from Tennessee and form, uh, Winthrop. Uh, people are loving that kid. Had a really good week for NC State in the ACC tournament. But Mr. Tomonaga, the man they call the Japanese Steph Curry, we have a chance to watch him play two games in the first weekend. That kid is going to generate so many tweets about him. Yeah. He's going to go viral so many times. He's on you, uh, Texas Tech? Nebraska. Uh, Nebraska. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nebraska Bowl. He, who did he light up? Was it in the Big Ten tournament? Uh, was like he was Indiana. over at half to Indiana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he does this after he hits three. He's like, whoa, I made a three. How do we do that? <laughs> he's, he's electric. Yeah. We also haven't even brought up the Blue Devils. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. They're here, too. Yeah. Well, that, that response kind of tells me it all, then. <laughs> I had them in the Elite Eight. <laughs> can we can we can we maybe get a Duke Kentucky in the uh I mean, Elite Eight? Because I, I, that would uh get some would eyeballs be so on So good for ratings. Some star power. Oh, uh, I don't want to see it. Tell though. us it's possible, Blutman. Can I mean it's can possible, anybody beat but, Houston? Yeah, I think I think Duke could beat Houston. Okay. I, I think I think Houston's still really good, but can Nebraska beat Houston? Uh, I don't uh, Houston's defense just clamps down so hard that it's hard to Nebraska shoots a three so well though and gets so hot that it gets scary. I I don't know. I can't see Houston losing two games in a three game span, right? Yeah. yeah. This um this region feels really tough. Yeah, it is. It feels like a really tough one. So give me your guys' picks and then give me your Well, can we I want a little Blutman and, and Tate on the PMT bowl. Yeah, that's happening. Um I love everything about it. I know yeah. Blutman's more of a purist and wants the the proper line seeds, but my goodness, that that someone in that committee is an award winning listener. Yeah, and said, "Hey, <laughs> I, I know you, all you old people have no idea what this is about to do, but you have to give us Wisconsin James yeah. Madison in the first round." There's a million different places they could have sent either of those teams for Wisconsin and James Madison to play first, and then to match up. I mean, okay. If you want to go Wisconsin James Madison first coincidence, that's fine. Winner matches up against Hank versus Jake Marsh's team. Yep, that's all I needed to see. Nah, that's pretty crazy. Blutman James Madison getting a 12 seed when Duquesne got an 11 is I. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what are we doing? Hate it. I didn't know you had this side to you. It, Every time I talk rare. to you, I learn something. I'm like stunned. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> a rare side. Yeah. Man. Um, so who's the pick and who's the uh, team to look out for that might make some noise? I think this is the one, like you said, that you know you, you got some big names in here. You, yeah. I could you close your eyes, you can see Houston, you see Duke, you see Kentucky, you can see Marquette, any one of them coming out. I'm gonna roll with what I said earlier though, which is when a grinded out, tough nosed team that locks people down matches up with a team that wants to go, 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 go. I'm going with the team that changes the style for the slower instead of the faster. So at the end of the day, Houston's going to match up with someone like Kentucky, in my opinion, and I think Houston's going to advance to the Final Four from the South. Okay. Yeah. Bobman? I hate this. I hate what I have. I want to change it so badly. Oh, I, I can't wait till he tells you what he has. I have Florida beating Duke in the Elite Eight. Ooh. Um, <laughs> I don't know why Florida's a seven and not a five. Or, or like I don't know why they're not a five. I really don't. They're a better team than Kentucky, in my opinion. Um, just, there's more well-rounded. And you have a kid that could take the game over whenever he wants in water clay and junior he dictates things really well zion poland's a really good uh player as well you see riverside transfer and they've got the bigs to defend down low even though hand glowed in broke his ankle or whatever in the sec championship they had three capable capable bigs now they have two tyree sam was one of them i don't know man richard's a really good player like 
Florida has a really good makeup, and they're coached very well by Todd Golden, who's an analytical nerd. Uh, he came over from San Francisco. They play very fast as well. They make their threes. They, yeah, yeah I like Florida, man. I don't know. Wow. Okay. okay. All right. Then the Midwest, the last region, we got Purdue. Ugh. They're back at the top. Uh, Tennessee's the two. Uh, Kansas, a battered Kansas, is four. And, uh, Creighton there in the three. What do we what do we think about? What do you three? guys think? So I was arguing with Titus about this yesterday about I think that Purdue is now playing with tight assholes because of what happened last year. And his argument was, you know, Virginia went back to went from yeah. losing the first round to winning it. And he said that that makes you as loose as can be because you've already hit rock bottom. You got to think if they're within five points, you know, in oh, the second half that yeah. that they're tighten up, it's tightening up a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah, like I think. If they are consistently able to keep the game going, you know, and it's not if you they're know, hanging around, if they're hanging, hanging around, around, yes, yeah. sure. If they're hanging around, it'll be tight. But I think coming into this, I think they'll be pretty loose because <laughs> that's like a live bet kind of game. Yeah, yeah. See how it starts, and then this is my this is my favorite bracket, Midwest by far, because honestly, it, it shows us that. You know, if we hit the gym in the morning and get our shots up, that we can all still play college basketball one day. Because <laughs> there's some good ass white dudes in this bracket. Yeah. Uh, Tennessee. Don Connect's my favorite player in the country. And then he's going to run into Shiren from Creighton. It's going to be sweet. Uh, Kansas is a little beat up. So I don't think they're going to go very far running into a Gonzaga team that's playing well. But uh, there's some good white dudes in this bracket. So I'm looking forward I feel like to this uh, is relating. all over the all over the bracket. Yeah. Some white dude. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you on yeah. that. Are we any, back? Any. Uh, <laughs> Reed any, Shepherd. Everyone Rain talking about Smith Kansas. On College of Charleston. Yeah, of course. That was going to be the Lefty that sniper. Love that. Everyone's talking about the Kansas injury. Does, does Samford have a chance here? I, I got I got one. I know one guy that knows ball, like Blutman Ball. Yeah. And he texted me. And he texted me and he said, I'm telling you right now. Samford money line, and that was before he was ruled out for the tournament. Mm -hmm. He said Samford is the play of the tournament. Ooh, okay. Hard to say no to that. Yeah, putting that in. Yeah, right. Titus and I don't like Samford or McNeese State. No, we talked about this before the bracket came out, and then it just so happened they matched up with two teams that we are grossed out <laughs> by and have zero interest in. This is. Honestly, one of my least favorite pods in the entire bracket. Uh, I, I, uh, Samford, uh, I don't know. like Samford's good. I just don't think that they're game breaking good like mid majors of the past on that 12 13 line, like in Ohio, who had Jason Preston. Uh, and like, I don't know, like, I just don't see that kind of player for Samford. I know a George or is like a good and highly thought of player, he's just not a game changer for me. So, I don't know. I, uh, I who's the pick Kansas out of that now. region? Uh, you know, uh, I have I have Tennessee over TCU. Okay, and who wow. do you have? Creighton. Creighton. I like Creighton. Three seed. I liked Creighton a lot last year. I had Creighton in the national championship. It okay. Got close, but. All right. Levin, when did this obsession with college basketball start? When the college football one did. So long ago. Okay. <laughs> what All does right. a what does like a week night? for you look like like in the middle of january sports you just, oh, you just if the golden the knights are playing they'll be on if there's tennis on i want to watch like australian open that will be on if there's college basketball on that'll be on it used to be like i'm like i i didn't watch near as much college basketball this year as i have in years past uh i can tell. I, I use yes i used to like we'd be at a family family dinner with like you know my dad brother grandparents uncle cousin etc at a restaurant and i'd have a mwac game pulled up on espn plus on my phone <laughs> in like 2019 or whatever like i used to be all the way locked in i used to be there's probably tweets i have from years ago where i'm watching i tweet a picture you know kind of jokingly poking fun myself of like eight seven or eight games just on my computer all at the mid-major level like yo i'm watching campbell right now chris clemens is playing basketball and you're outside that's <laughs> whack what are you doing well I, mean, I got a personal question for mm -hmm. you are you on any dozen team or in discussions with any dozen teams? nope mm, i'm trying to I'm, that seems I'm, like an oversight i'm piecing together a, a trivia squad and i uh 
He's high in recruiting. <laughs> I list. think I just found a free agent that might know a couple <laughs> things. Yeah, there there's talks of potentially trying to create an all ginger team here, which would oh. really shake things up. But aside from that, no. <laughs> all right, let's pick the winner here, and then we'll wrap this pot up. Uh, who you got? Who who is it? And who are they beating, Tate? I got UConn. They're the best team in the country. I know that's not the sexy pick because you know people want upsets, but I'm going to take the best team in the country um, by 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 a far margin, in my opinion. And then I'm going to have them beating Creighton. Okay. In the championship, Blutman. I want to change my pick. I have Florida beating UConn. I hate it. It's not too late. Florida. Beating I don't UConn. know how to change it, man. I don't. <laughs> I've tried changing it seven times, and I get to the same spot. All right. Well, then Whoa. don't fight it. Why wow. you have to? I, oh, I, oh. It's not your fault. Stick it's the with committee's it. fault. The Stick committee set it. up this bracket. They forced you to have Florida win in the national championship. Stick with it. Paul. Yeah, it's the only team I bet on the win. I bet them plus six thousand three weeks ago, but um, then this is that factoring happened, in? So I don't know. I no. Are you betting with your or playing with your heart here? No, I'm not. I just like I ah, I because this 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 tournament or sorry this college basketball season. There are two clear top dogs: UConn, Houston. I feel like the floor is wide open. Everyone else is on the same playing field. Like you know, <laughs> you see, Iowa State is a two seed, and Florida is a seven seed. For example, if they're playing on a neutral floor. Uh, let, let, have them play 10 games. Like, I think it's a 5 5 kind of deal. I just think everyone's matched up so evenly, except for Purdue, because they get every foul call that they ever want. Uh, I hope that team loses to Brown Locker, Montana State, or Grambling State. But uh, I don't like, I just look at this field and it's so wide open. Everyone is on equal playing field. So the committee did a good job. No, because <laughs> because it could have been it could have been even more chaotic, and okay. we have no clue what's going to happen. The unexpected's going to happen as it as it usually does. If St. Peter's beats Tennessee, uh, that uh, college basketball dynasty right there. Yeah, Corey Washington, the player to look out for there. And then like you have Western Kentucky saying on the fifteen line, they haven't been on uh, fifteen since like the days of Courtney Lee, right? That's so interesting to have Western Kentucky here. I think it's fascinating that I've brought this up with Vermont, with Colgate, with South Dakota State, Western Kentucky though too. These are the worst teams that those teams have had in a, in like a recent years like five six years or whatever western kentucky's been loaded with nba potential uh nba talent like charles bassey and and and, and they've had some other guys that i can't remember right now because there's names racing all around the brain but this is the worst team was the worst roster stansbury's had at western kentucky in a bit and they finally break through and make the tournament that's fascinating to me uh i don't know I'm just talking. All right. All right. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, I'm sure, where can people follow along with you guys for the re- the whole tournament? Let's Did you guys make a pick? Did you guys have a champ? Yeah, you guys need to make a pick. I, We're going to be on record. I want you guys yeah. on record. Yeah. I'm taking UConn. Nice. And <sighs> He's doing, know. he's doing what I'm I, doing. Now. I'm going I'm gonna take the sexy pick with Auburn out of that region. Uh, I'm going to go with Houston to win it all, though. Okay. Cool. I'm going to go Houston. Um. What? All right, then. Go follow Tate. Go follow Blutman. Twitter, Instagram, all that. Yeah, I'm on the Twitters. <laughs> He's on the t- L. Blutman. <laughs> Danny, got anything for Blutman? Uh, cheer up, dude. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm ecstatic. <laughs> this is no, going to be fun. And, Favorite yeah. day of the year. Can't you yeah. tell? We're going yeah. to watching, be watching it in the 100 Acre Forest. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, yeah. Well, I don't know what that reference is. That's, when, that's where Winnie the Pooh hangs out. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Good luck. Uh, and uh, yeah, best weekend of the year. One of them, at least. So we'll see you guys next time. Yeah.